Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. In today's video we're going to look at the new features in Dark Table 4.2.0. It has been a while and I apologize but life got in the way and I had a new job, I got, was busy and with other things as well. But now we have a new version of Dark Table and I think that's a good segue to restart the series and plan some videos for 2023. What we'll do today is we'll go through all the new big features, discuss them a little bit, and then I'll leave it up to you to vote for what we're going to tackle in the next video and the one after that and so on and so forth. All right, so let's get on with it. So we're going through the features that the manual refers to as the big ones. And the first one is a new module, which is always exciting. Though I have to say, I was surprised that we have a new module for what this module is doing. Still have to go deep into the difference between it and the modules that, well, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be replacing or at least doing the same job as, which are the filmic and the base curve module. So as you might have guessed, the whole point of this module is to readjust the tonal range of the image. So compress it, expand it, uh, move it towards the dark or the light. The same things that we do with usually with the base curve and or the filmic module. There you go. It actually looks, all right, I, dare I say it, simple. <laughs> Uh, as in, it has a lot less uh, widgets and uh, bars and uh, buttons that you can play around with. But one of the things that I like about uh, Darktable is that you have the ability to do the same thing using multiple tools. And sometimes it's a personal preference, which module you use or how you do it. Other times you have, even though two modules might do the same thing, one would be better at a certain kind of image than another. There we go. We have to go into this module to see what it does best. The next big feature are two new algorithms in the Highlight Reconstruction module. So you have here the methods and we have two new ones, which is in paint opposed and segmentation based. The first one is supposedly very stable and provides good results in many images. So it will become the new default in place of clip highlights. And I apologize if you can hear fireworks in the background. I live in the Netherlands and we're fireworks crazy. Around this time of the year, millions and millions of euros are spent on, high, on fireworks and hundreds of serious injuries end up in the hospital. So, you know, having them as background in my video is probably the least of uh, our worries, but they the third feature is that the pixel pipe used for image display in the darkroom view has been reworked so that it can be used elsewhere. So second display window, duplicate manager, style preview, snapshot routine. I'm quoting from the manual here. And the advantage is that has allowed for code deduplication as well as enhancement of many of these features. So the features were for instance, the style preview and the snapshot routine. Actually, style preview, I think, is a new feature because I don't remember it from the previous versions. But the snapshot routine, for instance, and the duplicate manager will have better features now that they're using the same pixel pipe as darkroom view. The third feature is that the second darkroom image window has been enhanced and now supports both the focus peaking and the ISO 12,664 color assessment modes. If you're not familiar with the second darkroom image window, it's a feature that supports dual screen setups. So you can have a second darkroom, well, image window uh, on your second screen, which is great. The next feature is that the snapshot module has been entirely reworked. Previously, it was as just a screen capture, but now it uses a dynamically generated view using the new pixel pipe functionality. So what we just discussed, instead of it being just a screenshot, if you remember, we used to, when we do a snapshot, you'd have a screenshot of what you had on the, on the screen at that moment that you, so that you can compare it with your workflow. Now it uses the, the new 
pixel pipe from Darkroom and that allows us to use the same features such as zooming and panning and whatever. Previously, if you were zoomed in, for instance, and then you take a snapshot, the snapshot was of the zoomed in image. If you wanted to zoom out in your workflow to try that, you wouldn't be able to zoom out the snapshot. You will be able to do that now, which is quite handy. The next feature is more or less similar because it's for the duplicate manager, but now it uses the same pixel pipe, so you'll be able to get exactly the same results on both of them. It used to be that previously there was a different pipe routine to calculate its previews. Well, yeah, which just meant that the previews sometimes of the duplicates differed when you're viewing them from the uh, module than when you actually load them. That wouldn't be the case anymore. Again, we're just going quickly through the um, enhancements now or the new features and we will go through them one by one in future videos. Another added bonus from using the uh, darkroom pixel pipe in other places is that it's now possible to preview the effect of applying a style, at least a user-generated style on an image, before you apply it. And Darktable can now extract um, lens correction information from the image EXIF metadata if your camera supports that and the lens correction module has been enhanced to use that data. Excellent. Next, Darktable is now able to read and write JPEG XL images. If you're not familiar with JPEG XL, it's a new uh, image format um, that is targeted towards photography. It has some really interesting features that we can go through uh, in a separate video if if that's interesting. If I remember correctly, one of the uh, major one was a larger gamut, which is great, but uh, you have as well uh, better image quality and better compression. You, you can even have um, lossless compression if you like, which is great as well. The uh, usability uh, change, which is actually something that I was really looking forward to, is that uh, if, if you have lots of modules in your pane and you expand the module, to, uh, previously if the uh, module is not completely visible then you had to manually scroll to, to make it visible, now it will automatically do that for you. All right, that's it for the major changes. There are still a few in the big ones, but they're mainly under the hood stuff. I'm really curious about what you think. What should we do next? I uh, promise that I'll be uh, making videos and uploading them more regularly again. So uh, it would be great to see where we should go next. That's it for this video. I hope that you found it uh, entertaining and interesting. If you have any comments, questions or corrections, please leave them in the comments below and I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye.